Good day friends, Dan Litvin from the Ayurveda and Yoga Institute. Want to start off today by saying this is the fourth virtual class that we're hosting. This is definitely a silver lining of the quarantine time and all of your responses, your support has been so amazing and uh, encouraging. So this is something that I would love to continue doing and your continued support is what will make sure that that happens. So please continue commenting and you know, participating in our discussions. Your thanks and gratitude and sharing you know, your experiences has been amazing. And of course, any donations that you can offer is greatly appreciated. We put all donations back into these classes to make sure that we can go and make sure they're good quality and that they're provided on a regular basis. So thank you so much for that. And on that note, if you're interested, um, I am thinking about putting together a live Zoom class. So if you would like to do that, I will do it on a Saturday or Sunday morning. So please comment and let me know what time would be good for you and if you're interested in it. Uh, and that way we'll go and be able to connect in a more personal way than uh, this timed response is. So today's class is going to be a theme that we continue on for at least this week and next week. We might continue it on for a little bit longer after that. And we haven't really spoken too much for those of you guys that are new to AYI about AYI's methodology. And to us, yoga is a spiritual practice. And yes, we do have you know, some of our chakra stuff and our crystals and all that. But ultimately, spirituality is a connection to the self, connection to inner truth, empowerment, connection to this vivacity and love for life, and feeling great in your own skin, in your own head, and being able to live according to your dharma, to your personal legend, to the things that make you shine and give you purpose. And so the way that you practice externally, so long as you're not getting hurt, really doesn't matter that much. It's about that internal journey. And that's going to be where the theme of class uh, dives into today, next week, and again, maybe continuing on a little bit longer. So what I would like to do is share with you a quote that comes from uh, Overcoming Trauma Through Yoga by David Emerson and Elizabeth Hopper. It's actually from the forward of it by a great psychiatrist named Bessel van der Kolk, who's written a fantastic book called The Body Keeps the Score, where I will probably be quoting from and sharing in the future. And this is from one of Dr. van der Kolk's patients, and it is going to be two quotes um, where she talks about, let's say, her experience with uh, yoga practice. I don't know all the reasons that yoga terrifies me so much. But I do know that it will be an incredible source of healing for me. And that is why I am working on myself to try it. Yoga is about looking inward instead of outward and listening to my body. And a lot of my survival has been geared around never doing those things. Going to class today, my heart was racing and part of me really wanted to turn around, but then I just kept putting one foot in front of the other until I got to the door and went in. After the class, I came home and slept for four hours. This week, I was doing yoga at home and the words came to me, your body has things to say. And I said back to myself, I will try and listen. Sorry guys, I guess we the heebie jeebies one more time. This week, I was doing yoga at home and the words came to me, your body has things to say. I said back to myself, I will try and listen. And that's going to be a real theme of today's class, of listening. What does this vessel have to say? There is so much intelligence here, but there's also so much history going on. And our bodies, our minds, our beings, we're designed to be healthy. You know, we've evolved for so long to be this miraculous being that we are. And so if we listen in and we tap in, there's the wisdom to heal there. We just have to listen. Unfortunately, there is a lot stored in there that can be scary, that can be inhibiting, that can be hidden away. And so we slowly and slowly and slowly, layer by layer and layer, practice yoga, practice all these other techniques that we do 
in order to come into wholeness and fullness. Let me continue reading on here. So it says here, Anna comes to my office once a week for therapy, but in between she likes to stay in touch and regularly emails me about what is going on with her. After about a month of doing yoga, Anna wrote to me again. I talked to David, her yoga teacher, I talked to David a little bit about how I push myself to breathe to those parts of my body that have been tortured. When I naturally stop my breath from going there. Today, when I was doing yoga, I tried to just send the breath to my trunk on both sides when I was in positions that are supposed to help open up the hips. I could feel how tight I was there, and some part of me told my body I was sorry for letting it hold all that stuff alone. Then, all of a sudden, I felt like I was inside my body and I could feel myself being abused by my father, but from the inside, not from the outside. I started to see it happening. I didn't feel pain and I didn't feel too scared, but I noticed exactly what was happening and some part of me accepted it as in, yes, that happened. I'm, am I making any sense to you? In a strange way, this felt like movement forward, not backward. This yoga stuff is mind-blowing. And I hope that this yoga stuff is mind-blowing to you. Yoga for me has transformed my life. It's transformed the life of my family. It's provided relationships that we never otherwise could have had and discussions and communication. It's allowed to, me to see myself as someone who does have power and someone that does have a voice and someone that can radically love myself and others. And that was something that was really hard growing up. And so I hope that yoga helps you along your journey, however, whatever, and wherever that is. And I hope that we can do it together. So for class today, you will need a strap. If you don't have a strap, then a, a belt will do. A belt from a robe tends to be really nice. Um, anything that's long, a towel can work as well. Um, also, a blanket is going to be fantastic um, or a light, small pillow. We will be not leaving our backs for the entirety of class. And so if you have a nice plush carpet, it might be nice to practice on that. Otherwise, it's a all levels class. We'll do some breathing awareness in the beginning, some nice stretches as we go. We will build a little bit of heat and purposely stimulate some discomfort in the body so we can listen to what happens when that response happens. Again, otherwise, it's a good class, I think. Enjoy and let me know um, how everything goes in the comments below. Thanks all. Okay, let's get started today on our backs. So lay back, get comfortable. You can have legs extended long or perhaps the knees remain bent today. You can keep them here. You can take the legs by mat width apart, knock the knees in, whatever feels comfortable. And if you notice I have a blanket under my head, just a little bit, creates a little bit of comfort there. And from this point, hands can relax beside you, or maybe they rest right by your navel, maybe right underneath the navel, one hand atop of the other. Let the eyes come to a close if they aren't already and take some time to sink in and get comfy. Once you find that comfortable place, take some time to notice the breath today. What is the breath telling you in this moment? Take some time here to begin to expand into the breath. Whatever that may mean to you in this moment. Maybe feeling the belly rise a little bit more fully. Maybe extending the length of the breath. Maybe it just means expanding your awareness on the breath.
gonna do a short practice here. And the practice goes like this. I'm going to name a part of your body. And when I name that part of your body, I'd like you to imagine that that's where your lungs exist, that you can physically breathe into that place. We'll start, let's say, simply enough on an anatomical meaning by really trying to fill up the lungs. The lungs exist flanking your heart in your chest. So as you inhale, feeling the chest really expanding, feeling the breath penetrate into the chest, into the lungs deeply, maybe into the muscles around the chest and the ribs, maybe even into the heart center. Take some time here. This may feel amazing. This may feel full of some sensation that's uncomfortable or even scary. This may feel none of those ways completely different or may feel nothing in particular at all. But as you breathe here, listen, what is your body, what is your breath telling you in this moment? Let's shift awareness down into the stomach. Within the stomach area, we have our solar plexus, our center of willpower, of determination. Down towards the bottom of the stomach, we have our sacral area, the water within the body, our creativity, our sensuality. So let this whole area, the whole belly, expand fully as if the lungs existed in the stomach. And once again, while you're here, what is your body, what is your breath telling you here? See if you can be with whatever sensation comes up. Again, that sensation may be no sensation at all. That's fine. It may feel amazing to breathe here. That's fine. It may feel scary. It may hurt. It may feel locked away and that's fine too. If it gets too much, you can always open your eyes. You can always step off the mat. But see, can you be with it? Can you listen fully and deeply?
Let's shift again down into the pelvis, into this area by the hips, the waist. You have here again the sacral chakra, that area of sensuality, creativity. You also have your root, your place of survival, of connection to earth, of connection to life. This is an area that can be very disconnected. So again, as if your lungs were in your pelvis, see if you can breathe in there. Shift that awareness again. We're going to jump back up to that chest, heart area. And if your hands are on your belly here, you may opt to put one or both hands by the chest. Taking some time again, revisiting here. Breathing into the chest, the lungs, the heart. The center of unconditional love. But shift the awareness upwards, into the face, into the head. And if you'd like to, you can take the hands, bring the middle fingers together and bring them so where the eyebrows meet and shift them up about half an inch. The hands can come wide and then almost as if the hands were falling apart, but the middle fingers stay on that center of the forehead area. This is uncomfortable for the arms, let them rest wherever they would like. But for a bit more, continue breathing as if your lungs existed in your head.
And one more time, bring the breath as if the lungs existed in the stomach. If you'd like to place the hands there again, you are so welcome to do so. can remain closed. In fact, maybe they remain closed for most of class. Take the hands up as if they're reaching up for the ceiling. Bring the thumbs in, wrap the forefingers around the thumbs and start to make some circles with the wrists. Try to keep the shoulder blades planted on the ground as the knuckles reach away. Good, rotating the other way. As we practice today, just noticing what the body tells you, breathing in a way that suits you and serves you now. Good, release the hands, shake them out, and then take them up and overhead, reaching towards the wall behind you. Extend the legs out long if they aren't there already. Take two, three incredibly full breaths here, full body. If you'd like with the exhale, out the mouth. Good. Keep the hips planted. Begin to walk the arms and torso towards the right. Let the legs move over towards the right as well, coming into banana asana. You can stay as you are if you'd like to. You can bring your left wrist into your right hand, reaching further. If you'd like, you can take your left ankle over the right, coming into a bit of a deeper side body stretch. We'll hold here for some time, breathing in, Noticing again, what is the body telling you here? Next inhale, unwinding, hands reach long, legs reach long. Take a moment to neutralize. And let's initialize the second side, walking the arms and the torso to the left, letting the legs come in tow, and then finding your version on this side, acknowledging that both sides may be different. If you would like and it feels good for you, right wrist and left hand, right ankle over left.
Next inhale, come back to center. And if you have a blanket underneath your head, please put it out to the side. You won't need it for some time. And from this place, bend the knees, heels underneath the knees, interlace your hands and bring them underneath the back of your head. Take a moment here, relaxing the head heavy into the hands, letting the forearms rest onto the ground. We're gonna do a very, very subtle little motion here. So with the next exhale, squeeze the abdomen, press the low back flat into the ground and empty out, empty out, empty out, squeezing the abdomen, showing off your six pack. And when you finish the exhale, squeeze out a little more and then inhale fully, relaxing the pelvis, filling up through the entire torso. Continue on with the pace of your breath for several rounds here. Exhale, squeezing to empty. Inhales, relaxing, coming to fullness. Let's begin to add on to this motion. So next time you exhale, to help facilitate a deeper exhalation, begin to lift your shoulders and chest off the ground, squeeze in the core, empty, 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 empty. And then inhale, relaxing the spine down, the head down, fill up fully. So you're doing this motion out of the strength of your abdomen, of your core, squeezing to lift. When the inhales come, lowering down. One way to make sure you're not lifting out of ego, you're not lifting from the strength of your chest and hands, is that the elbows stay wide the entire time. For some of us, we'll lift quite high. For some of us, we won't even lift off the ground at all. Wherever you are is perfectly fine but letting that lift be more of a facilitation of emptying out through the torso, through the abdomen. Several more times, nice and slow here, yogi crunches. If this starts to get warm, if there's some sensation going on, see if you can be with it. What does it feel like? What does that discomfort feel like? What does that heat feel like? Good. One more round. Next time, the head relaxes down. Take your arms wide. Bring your knees into your chest and let the knees drop over to the right. Try to keep the left shoulder on the ground. If it lifts off a little bit, it's fine. If it lifts off a lot, bring a prop underneath the knees. Your gaze can be straight up. It can be over that left hand sinking in here. fall over to the left. Again, acknowledging both sides will be different, modifying as need be.
Next inhale, lift the knees up. Plant the feet solidly onto the ground. Draw the right knee into your chest. Give it a little bit of a squeeze and maybe draw some small circles with it. You can keep your hands on your shin or your knee. You can release them and let that knee be a little bit more frivolous here. Whatever feels good in your body. Good, switching directions. Taking a few more rotations here. And then draw that right knee back into the chest. Draw it in towards that right armpit, taking some time to open gently into that right hip. And from this point, taking that right shin so it's directly underneath that left knee. Take the hands once again behind the back of the head, relaxing onto the hands. And now with the next exhale, when you squeeze out empty, feel as if the right side is really squeezing and contracting. The inhales, breathe in fully. Exhales again, squeezing. It feels almost as if that right hip point and that right rib cage start to come in towards one another. And it might even feel good to take the left hand over that right side of the abdomen, feeling the contraction with the exhales. Relaxing with the inhales, a few more times. left hand is on that right side, bring it back behind your head. You're welcome to stay doing this action if you want to take it up a notch. With the next exhale, as you start to squeeze empty, that left shoulder lifts up and reaches towards that right hip point. Inhales, relax down. Continue with the pace of your breath. Again, this is about the squeezing of the abdomen, not lifting through the arms. So keep the left elbow especially nice and wide here. The hands are there to cradle the head so the neck doesn't really work here. Inhales, fill. Exhales, squeeze empty as if you're squeezing out a rag. Several more times. One more repetition. Next time the head comes on down, let it stay there. And then you're going to take the hands down towards the left thigh, bring the left knee in towards the chest, keeping that right leg where it is. You could reach for that left shin behind the left thigh, maybe take a strap around, whatever feels good, and start to come into the supine pigeon here. Let the right knee continually reach away from you and finding a stretch perhaps in that right glute area. Be here, notice, feel, maybe even enjoy.
with the next exhale, releasing. Reach both legs long, reach arms up and overhead. Nice full body stretch. Excellent, maybe you shimmy out a little bit. And let's get ready for side two. So bending the knees, planting the feet onto the ground. Left shin will come underneath that right knee. Taking both hands behind the back of the head, or if you did last time, maybe that right hand comes towards that left side body. Inhales full. Exhale, squeeze that left side, trying to bring in the left hip point to the base of the left ribs. Inhales, fill. When the exhales come, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. side, bring it behind the back of the head. Feel free to continue doing as you were doing. If you'd like to take it up one notch, then as you exhale and squeeze, right shoulder towards the left hip point. Inhales, relax down. Exhales, squeezing to empty. That right shoulder lift helps squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Continuing on for a few more rounds. complete one more round and the next time the head is resting on the ground on the hands staying there for a moment and then releasing the hands bring the right knee in towards the chest once again figure four pose here Next, exhale, releasing legs down. Once again, full body stretch. Reaching the arms tall, legs long. Maybe you shimmy as if you're trying to climb a rope with the hands. Good. And then once again, bend at the knees, heels underneath the knees. Hands relax down so that maybe the middle fingers can graze the backs of the heels. Press the hands into the ground, press the feet into the ground. The next exhale, begin to lift the pelvis off the ground. Inhale, relax down. You're going to go slowly between these two points. Exhales, pressing hands, feet, legs to lift those hips. Inhales, vertebrae by vertebrae, sinking back down until the pelvis rests heavy. Good. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you want to bring in a little bit more full body awareness here, as you exhale and lift, begin to bring the arms up and overhead. See if the backs of the hands can touch the ground overhead at the point that the hips lift the highest. As you lower the hands down with the inhales, the pelvis and hands will try to touch down at the same time. As we continue on for several more rounds, notice what's happening inside. Perhaps there's heat building. What's your reaction to the heat? Perhaps you feel really in sync with this motion and it feels quite nice. Perhaps you're a little frustrated that it's hard to sync up that motion of the hands and the hips. Wherever you are, notice, no need to judge, just be with. Now the next time the hips are lifted, stay there. You're welcome to keep the arms up and overhead you can take the hands beside the torso. You can bend at the elbows, reach the fingers up towards the ceilings and really press the triceps into the ground. You can also take a standard bridge, interlacing hands underneath the back, bring the shoulder blades together so you roll on the tops of the shoulders. Now find your bridge pose. Keep in here fully, pressing the feet into the ground, pressing the shins away from you, the chest gently in towards the chin. You're going to stay here for an extended amount of time. If you need to come out, you can. But otherwise, try to be here with your body. Listen. What is your body telling you as you hold this pose for longer and longer? Notice, is there anywhere that's over gripping? Anywhere that you put in, let's say the extra engagement. Can you relax those areas and let your body support itself in a more wholesome way? Maybe it means pressing the feet into the ground. Maybe it means relaxing the glutes. Maybe it means pressing the arms down. Maybe it means breathing deeper. When your next exhale comes, find your way down onto your backs. Extend your legs long, relax your arms wide. We're not coming to Shavasana, but let's take a moment to relax. What does this rebounding effect in your body feel like now? After all that work, are you holding anywhere still? Can you let yourself fully relax?
Give yourself a squeeze. Maybe roll side to side. Maybe you draw some circles with the knees. Maybe you roll up and down, whatever feels good. Taking a couple moments here. And as you're ready to continue on, grab your strap or your belt or your row belt, whatever you're using here. Towel can also be an option. You're going to take that strap, wrap it around the ball of your right foot. Keep the right knee in the chest to begin with and extend that left leg long. From this point, begin to extend the right leg up towards the ceiling and have a relaxed, a relaxed uh, grasp with the hands here. Finding a nice gentle stretch in the back of that right leg. Eyes closed if it's available. And be here with the stretch. Begin to take both ends of the strap into the right hand. Take the left hand out to the left. As you begin to open the right leg out to the right, let the toes continue to point back behind you. So try not to lift the toes up towards the ceiling. However low you go is however low you go. If you're an experienced practitioner or you have a lot of flexibility and you want to reach for that toe, you are welcome to. Perhaps you notice with time the leg sinks a little closer to the ground. Or perhaps you notice with time the sensation becomes so much stronger that you come out of the pose a bit. Acknowledge your truth and practice according to it. into the left hand. Bring the right arm out to the right and you can do this with a straight leg or you can bend the knee. Begin to take that right leg over the left side and lift up that right hip so the right hip is over the left so that the sacrum is perpendicular to the ground. Your gaze can be straight up, you can look over the right side. Trying to find a place where you can enjoy this twist.
Next inhale, coming back to neutral. Draw both knees into the chest. Release the strap, give yourself a bit of a squeeze and any little motions you'd like to neutralize with here. Again, maybe some circles with the knees, maybe a sway side to side or up and down. Maybe you just want to relax flat on your back. Let's get ready for side two. So planting both feet into the ground. Bring the left knee in, wrapping the strap around the ball of the left foot. Extend the right leg long and begin to reach that left leg up towards the ceiling. Hands relax, find a nice stretch in the back of that left leg and be here. Begin to take both ends of the strap into the left hand. Bring the right arm out to the right and let that left leg sink down to the left. Once again, what is your body telling you here? Can you listen? And can you give your body what it needs, what it's requesting? There is so much intelligence there. Honor it. Right hand grabs the strap, left arm out to the side, straighter bent knee, shift over into that twist. Once again, sacrum perpendicular to the ground, hips stack.
Next inhale, begin your way back on up. Releasing that strap. Taking a moment for a full body extension. And then draw the knees into the chest. Knees in towards armpits. Reaching the hands towards the outsides of the feet, the shins, the insides, wherever. And coming into happy baby pose here. Maybe rolling side to side, maybe being still. Once again, what message are you receiving here? Notice if you cast on judgment, blame, criticism, rationality. For right now, can you just listen with open ears? Draw the knees into the chest. Wrap your arms around the shins. Exhale, bring the forehead, the shoulders in. Squeeze tight. Take a few moments here, being nice and tight. Every exhale, squeeze in some more. Inhales, breathe into the compression. Next exhale, releasing all the way into Shavasana. Final relaxation. I recommend taking some time here, propping yourself up. That blanket can go back under the head, maybe over the legs. Shavasana today will be slightly more extended compared to some of our other classes. So enjoying here.
Begin to shift your awareness back into the room that you're in. Bringing the sound of my voice back into awareness. And slowly does it over the course of the next five to eight breaths or so. As if the entire left side of your body was your left lung. The entire right side of your body was your right lung. Inhaling as if the whole body was drawing in air. Exhaling to empty. Each new breath is a new opportunity to fill up with this life 
giving nutrient with this life giving energy. Notice any sensations that come as you breathe here. Begin to explore small movements in the hands and toes. In wrists and ankles. reach up and overhead, extend your toes away, draw knees into chest and roll onto one side of your body, resting in the fetal position. Gently press your way up to a comfortable seat, taking your time. If available, keep the eyes to a close. And when you find that seat, letting the hands relax down one more time, listening to the body. How does the body feel? And what is the body telling you? together to your heart center. Bow your chin down. Take a moment to honor the courage it takes to listen deeply. The courage it takes not to cast blame or judgment. Honor the wisdom within your body. As it is said, the light and the divinity within me honors, sees, and reveres the light and divinity within you. Namaste.